Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. Five months of sweat and hard work have been the prelude to this weekend's grand prize, the ACC tournament title. There have been some last-second game-winning shots and amazing plays throughout the season. But victory only comes when one team raises that championship trophy overhead on Sunday. Teams have their eyes on the prize while they remember their past triumphs. Like everyone before it, this season has had an emotional mix of highs and lows, excitement and disappointment. And it won't be any different here in the Georgia Dome. These are the faces of the most tradition-rich and storied college basketball conference. The players who step onto the court tonight follow in the footsteps of some of the great players in the history of the game. And backing them up are some of the most fired up and loyal fans in the nation in a conference where battle lines are drawn every day. North Carolina and Duke have set the standard once again in the regular season. But there have been some serious challenges to the ACC basketball throne. And the fight to wrestle away control of the conference's top prize begins now. It's a new season for NC State. They come in here 13 and 15. They know if they lose tonight, their season is over. They have a chance to rejuvenate, put behind them the last couple of weeks. And of course, for the Duke Blue Devils, a chance to continue on and try to do so without Carlos Boozer, kind of reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and do it in a fun sort of way. Herb Sendek, in his eighth year of coaching, of course, his NC State record of 149 wins. It's been a tough season for him, for Mike Krzyzewski. He's had to put things together with a patchwork lineup that has been scarred with injuries all season long. So why should the Carlos Buzo injuries be any different? Well, I don't know. But interestingly enough, you notice Duke wearing their black uniforms. And just talking about a patchwork lineup, they're wearing their black uniforms because they actually forgot their white uniforms. And the guys on the bench are wearing T-shirts. Gear for Sports makes those T-shirts. And the Duke guys had to go over to ACC Fan Fest and get those T-shirts so they'd have warm-up shirts. Can you imagine the equipment manager when he opened up that chest and found no home whites? Well, I'm telling you, it makes other problems in life easy. Can you imagine the guy who had to go tell Shusevsky they forgot the uniform? You do it. No, no, you do it. I did it last time. There was no last time. That's just it. Shane Battier has the ball as Duke gets the opening tip. And the ball stolen away. Clifford Crawford. Crawford ahead to Grundy and State strikes first. Well, one of the things that Duke is not going to be able to do is to turn the ball over and give North Carolina State the opportunity to score easy baskets, Steve. NC State in the man-to-man -man defense, they are very strong defensive unit. And their defensive unit has been belied somewhat by their offensive turnovers. Here comes Crawford. Off an 18-point game in the season finale and a walk by Ron Kelly before the block by Battier. Steven, that's something that you're talking about there. They get the ball on the defensive end. They run it up the court. They get themselves in good position, but they travel with the basketball. Team that is 5-11 in ACC play. The Duke Blue Devils 26-4, the second seed to North Carolina, but a share of the conference regular season championship. And Duke comes back. Chris Duhon. That's a difficult matchup for Archie Miller. Even though Duhon is considered to be one of the shorter guys, only about 6'2 or 3, Archie Miller is going to have a tough time guarding him down close to the basket. And he's battling with a stress fracture on his leg. Here comes Wilkins down along the lane, and Sanders packs it away. It's saved back to Wilkins. Here's Ron Kelly. Oh, he's what a got play! Battier strips him up for Cup Duke. And a walking violation against the Blue Devils. Frantic action both ends, Dan don't want to be in a big hurry if you're the Duke Blue Devils you want to play quickly you want to make it a game of quickness and fast pace but you don't want to be in a hurry this is just an outstanding move by Shane Battier to block that ball now he actually threw the ball into trouble there Duhon had Crawford standing right next to him and Shane Battier I'm sure would like to have had would like to have that ball back Ronnie the junior from Louisville Crawford at the top Finishing the regular season strong. Wilkins, in the meantime, takes a baseline. Nice cross pass to Kelly. The kick out to Archie Miller. Ten on the shot clock for Kelly. And his basket doesn't go down. Duke doing a nice job trying to disrupt North Carolina State's offensive pattern at the moment. Here's Williams. Catch and shoot for three. The most prolific three-point shooter in the ACC starts off with his first bucket of the game. That's a nice double screen there for Jason Williams. 
Here's some nuisance pressure here by the Blue Devils as NC State gets it into front court. Archie Miller missed nine games because of the stress fracture. Stress fractures, Dan, they take time to heal. They never really totally mend themselves unless there's a lot of rest. And of course, Carlos Boozer doesn't have a lot of rest, a lot of time to rest anyhow. Right. She stands on the sidelines. Here's Grundy. Too tough an angle. Kelly inside, blocked by Sanders, his second. And that's two very early in the game. Ahead it goes now, Sanders blocked back. Back at you by Ron Kelly. Ball is loose, offensive foul against NC State. One of the things that NC State wants to avoid, you want to take the opportunity basket, but you don't want to get in a game where you're doing nothing but running up and down with the Duke Blue Devils. This is a real nice job. Battier and Sanders set the double screen, and Jason Williams does as good a job as anybody in the country being ready to shoot the ball when he catches it. Inbound comes to Duhon for three, and he is hit by Miller. And this will be a three-point shot coming up for Chris Duhon. Archie Miller's first, second team foul. Archie Miller picking up his first. That's the team's first. Herb Sendek going with a small lineup tonight to counter the perimeter game of the Duke Blue Devils. Obviously concerned about the Duke quickness. Duhon to the free throw line. He's a 61% free throw shooter. 6-1 out of Slidell, Louisiana. ACC Rookie of the Week. One time around and really coming on strong at the tail end of the season. Hit the game winner, of course, against Wake Forest. Cooley and Tomlin. Not a very good free throw shooter, though. Only got 60% on the year. It's the second of three. Duke in the lead here by a 6-2 count. There's Carlos Boozer. Likely if uh, we'll be ready for Duke's NCAA journey, but will not appear at all this weekend. Duhon, it's two out of three. And one of the things that this Duke pressure does is force NC State to run some time on the clock. And force them to start their offense a lot higher than they want. There's Damon Thornton who comes into the game. The high post was between the circles. Proper. Dangerously to work. He'll try baseline out. Boy, that's good defense by Battier. Just standing there trying to take the charge. Everybody knows how well he does taking the charge, so you're a little bit intimidated by it. Jason Williams changed speeds to no avail. Damon Thornton, three on two, will pack break. Grundy on his way in, and he'll score. That's a good screen inside. 7-4, Duke out in front here early. Three and a half gone in his first half. Man-to-man -man defense for North Carolina State. And the pace of the game has been very quick thus far. Battier, checked there by Wilkins. Another cover for him, Battier. Offensive foul, Shane Battier. Wilkins really working hard defensively. Now, you don't have to be standing still to draw a charge. You just have to get yourself in guarding position, both feet on the floor facing the dribble. Then you're allowed to move to maintain that position. And anytime you have the contact, shoulder to torso, generally it's a charging foul. You each are afforded your own piece of real estate. And Battier invaded Wilkins. Here comes Miller. When you lower that shoulder, it's almost automatic. Yep. Crawford on the wing. Spies Thornton in the post. Back they go to Thornton. Christensen in the ball game now with Nate James. Early substitutions for Mike Krzyzewski and Christensen will pick up the foul as Grundy or other Crawford try to make his way around the top. Christensen with the foul and NC State will have the ball back trailing Duke by three here in the first half in Atlanta quarterfinal Friday continues. Can't be a good sign on the left, on the right leg of Damian Wilkins. The trainer's working on him on the NC State sideline. Wilkins has struggled, Dan, over the last five or six games. His shooting percentage down around 37%. He's been in single digits each time, but not for lack of trying here tonight. He's had a couple of excellent opportunities in close. Sometimes you really start trying a little too hard, and it's difficult to play hard and relax at the same time. And I think Damian Wilkins probably having a little trouble stretching out right there. Boy, they, they really can't afford to lose him, even if he's not scoring. He can be so effective defensively and rebounding the basketball. So he'll take a seat as Thornton continues to play along in Crawford, Grundy, and Miller. 7-4, Duke in the lead here, and C-State with the ball. Both teams wearing their road uniforms because of his mistake 
with the equipment manager in Duke. He forgot the home whites. Grundy into the lane. Nice move for the basket plus the foul. And one of the things that Grundy is very capable of doing is taking the ball on that dribble, penetrating to the basket and creating problems for the Duke Blue Devils. They don't really have a shot blocker in the game, although Battier can sometimes get there. But this is just a great move by Grundy. Beat the guy out on the perimeter, go to the basket. That's out of the Duke playbook. Grundy scored everything for uh, NC State here early. His unorthodox free throw style. Nets him his seventh point of the game and has increased his free throw percentage from 56 to 78 percent. He's got a tie ball game here. All tied at seven. Duhon at the top. Nate James on the wing. Shot by Williams is batted away by Crawford. And for an update on the condition of Damian Wilkins, it sends you to Gil McGregor. Hey, thanks, Steve. You know, it's not Damian's knee. It's above his right knee. It's bruised a bit. I don't think it's anything very, very serious, so we'll see him back pretty soon. All right, thank you, Gil. Easy for Gil to say. <laughs> Bruce, but it's not serious. Go ask him. <laughs> James tries to split the D. Grundy tries to pick his pocket and finally does, but it's taken back by Duhon. Only five left on the shot clock. Duhon, three seconds, two seconds. Batty A, no. Rebound Duhon on the recycle. Williams for three. Another offensive rebound for Duke. Duhon gets the baseline and the bucket. Boy, one thing you can't do is give a team with the offensive capabilities possessed by the Duke Blue Devils more than one opportunity. And with those three-point shots, oftentimes you have long rebounds. NC State needs to corral those long rebounds and start the break the other way. Crawford out along the way. Sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, looking inside. Finds Inge. That's the first time Inge has touched the ball in this game. Inside it goes. Thornton drops step up and off. But NC State has the rebound. Arch Miller for three. And that's an element that NC State missed sorely when Miller was out of the game. He gets the ball off so quickly. First three-pointer for NC State in their first attempt. One for four. And a man for North Carolina State. Patty A on the perimeter. Still looking for his first basket. Miller finds Norton ahead. And Duhon gets there. Yes, the foul. But not to stop the shot of him. Steve, that's exactly what I was talking about. The long rebound right there. Archie Miller gets it in the middle of the lane area and is able to just turn and come right down the court. Miller looks up, and there he's got a guy open ahead of the pack. It's Thornton. Duhon does a nice job. Very fortunate for the Duke Blue Devils that Thornton missed that shot. As you said, long shots beget long rebounds. That started a break for NC State. It's Thornton. Goes to the free throw line. Damian Damon is 51%. He's a senior from Norfolk, Virginia. Christensen and James step out. Sanders is back in with Dunleavy. So obviously a good foul by Duhon. Saves him at least one point. Norton on for one more. One out of two. That one almost brought rain. 11 9. NC State in the lead. Here comes Duhon with the drive plus the foul. So three point plays abound on both sides now. Foul, I believe, is going to be to Damon Thornton. That's a pretty good change of pace by Duke. Thus far in this game, Steve, they've been sort of content to stand outside and shoot the jump shot. But Duhon just really accelerates through the lane. NC State back on defense, but nobody really ready to guard Duhon, and he took advantage of it. So Duhon will go to the line now. He leads Duke in scoring here with six early on. Game is tied for the third time at 11. Duhon with the three-point play, and Duke will apply pressure. Carlos Boozer watching from the sidelines. Damian Wilkins breaks the press. Inge on the baseline. First time he's even had a look at that. Back to Inge again. Props. Grundy. Trapped on the baseline. Still plenty of time. Yeah, but look where NC State is now. They got the ball at half court. There's only 13 seconds left on the clock. Crawford tries to get him into a play. There's the switch on a bigger cover with Sanders and a travel on Crawford before he turned the ball over. That's the fourth miscue for NC State. And that one wasn't really a miscue that was forced by the Duke Blue Devils. Crawford just got going a little too quickly. 
might have been a little giddy at the switch that found him on a bigger, yet maybe a smaller player. Don Levy fouled out front by Thornton. And there's there's a place where Duke really has a matchup advantage. You get Dunleavy out on the perimeter, he's going to be difficult to guard. That is the fourth team foul on NC State. The score earlier today, North Carolina advancing. Sanders boards the miss. Pass to Battier broken up. Taken by Wilkins. Grundy takes baseline and scores again. What's the foul? Well, I don't know that that's in the NC State playbook, but maybe it ought to be. That was an interesting, <laughs> interesting play. All starts with Casey Sanders isn't sufficiently confident to shoot the ball, tries to pass it, gets it stolen, and then Grundy finishes the play with a real nice move to the baseline. And NC State really pumped up about what's going on here. I think they really feel like they have a chance. Certainly nothing for the Wolf Pack to lose. Just go out and play. Talked to assistant coach Sean Miller, and he said, he really didn't play well on senior day, and these guys have all week talked about it for that. Grundy, three-point play gives him 10. NC State with a two-point lead. Steve, we talked about Grundy when we were doing the starting lineups. Is how he was a guy that could create some problems for the Duke Blue Devils, and thus far he has been nothing but a problem for Duke. Williams catch and shoot. Grundy gets the rebound. NC State runs out. The throw over to Miller. I don't know how he knew he was there, but it happened. Here's Kelly. Wilkins out front. Patty A watching him. Wilkins, not a lot of confidence in that perimeter jumper. Especially when he's missed two right down inside on the base. That's probably a good pass out, particularly with Patty A standing right there. <laughs> Ten on the shot clock now. Carolina State has not done a good job so far executing at the end of the shot clock. Kelly stripped of the ball with three on the shot clock. NC State will have it back. Clifford Crawford getting set to check in. So is Nate James for Duke. You know, Kelly gets a run. Kelly's going to get tired of uh, Battier in there. That's twice now that Battier has taken the ball from Kelly in exactly the same kind of play. In, inbound, fires it up. That's a vi violation. The ball did not hit the rim. So Duke will get it back. It's the fifth turnover. Guys always hate to get the ball. That amount of situation, you get the shot clock on your back, and what happens next isn't going to be pretty. But one of the key things is the ability to execute at the end of the shot clock. And North Carolina State has failed a couple of times here early in the game. They've done well when they've been able to get out in transition, but particularly when the shot clock's running down, they've had a tough time with their offensive execution. Comes the drive and the shot rims out by Battier. Ron Kelly has the rebound. Battier, Don Levy have not scored, and Williams only has one three. NC State's done a nice job defensively so far. Not a lot of easy opportunities for State on offense, but not a lot of easy opportunities for Duke on the offensive end either. And good energy for NC State to start out here. Crawford at the top, shot clock now is going to make its way to 10. Screen and roll, ends is alone. Crawford can't see him and throws it away down the sideline looking for Wilkins. Timeout on the court with 11.27 left to go. Anthony Grundy's been the star of this one. 10 of the Wolfpack's 14 points from his hand. Thus far for North Carolina State, it's been the Anthony Grundy story, and Grundy has done it by taking the ball to the basket, utilizing his quickness, getting it inside, particularly in transition. Grundy four for five with 10 points in the ball game already for North Carolina State. And Steve, I think that's a key for Grundy. He has taken the ball past his Duke defenders. No jump shots thus far for Anthony Grundy. He's taken it to the goal and he's been successful. Grundy has struggled since NC State took the turn into conference play, but he has been the star here tonight. As Dan said, NC State leading Duke 14 to 12. Steve Mark, Dan Bonner, Mike Hogwood, Gil McGregor. Here in the Georgia Dome. And for Duke, not a lot of uh, versatility thus far on offense. Nine points for Duhon, three points for Williams. Duhon is three for three. The rest of the team, Steve, is one for 12. And that adds up to four for 15. And that's testimony to State's defensive effort. James looking inside for Sanders. He falls to the court and executes a pass. Adier will pick it up. There's only 10 on the shot clock. Williams. Got off a couple of shots here. This would be his third. Rebound comes to Sanders. 
Walk inside. I think it was Kelly. That's two blocks in the game for Kelly. He's doing a nice job. Crawford dares to take it inside, and he gets fouled. And this is going to be on Sanders. Sanders second. Wolfpack taking it inside with a great deal of confidence. Casey Sanders has had the ball in there a couple of times for Duke and just hasn't been able to power it up to the goal. Clifford Crawford will go to the free throw line. 18 points and three out of four from three-point land against Wake in the season finale. He was the only Wolfpack player really answered the call in the last regular season home game. Casey Sanders gets a seat. But North Carolina State really has not shot the ball from, well from the free throw line recently, and that has hurt them. 14 for 30 against Wake. Crawford with his first basket of the game, and we're getting our first look at Reggie Love. Comes in for Casey Sanders. Love. Football player inside a wide receiver and he gets fouled. And the foul is going to be charged for Ron Kelly. Now, do you have a question about today's ACC tournament action? Go online at theacc.com and submit your question. Following the game, the best one will be answered by one of our analysts. Theacc.com, the official website of the Atlantic Coast Conference. So we only have to answer one. That's it. Okay. All right. What day is it? <laughs> Dan? Uh, 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 Dan, Gill, Mike, anybody. Reggie Love to the free throw line. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a freshman. Hadn't seen an awful lot of playing time this season. But pressed into service because of the injury to Carlos Boozer. Mike Krzyzewski has had to really rearrange his lineup. And the interesting thing about Love is he caught the ball inside and powered it to the basket, something that Casey Sanders didn't do when he had it inside. And as a result, Love is able to draw the foul. Love shakes loose a couple of... Free throws and cuts NC State's lead down to one, 15-14. Winner here meets the winner of our second quarterfinal game of the evening, the fourth of the day, Maryland and Wake Forest. Grundy. Back to Miller at the top. Into the corner, Crawford with a step on Williams, but Williams quickly catches up and gets a piece of Boy, that's a nice defensive play. Batty, a quick catch and shoot. He's got to be frustrated. Held score for the first 10 minutes of this half. Grundy couldn't find the handle on it. Dunleavy gets it. Kelly gets involved. It's a scrum now. And Cousy gets it to pop out. Here comes Jason Williams. Williams spins and gets fouled. Archie Miller picking up the foul, and that's going to be his second. Well, I'll tell you what, those guys are all over that basket ball. <laughs> Love is down there, thinks that's a fumble, he's popped loose and he's trying to get it, but Battier is the guy who gets it, gets it out of there, and then Jason Williams really knows how to keep the pressure on in the fast break, break particularly when he's handling the ball in the middle. Reggie, Reggie will go back to Coach K and says, Coach, we got the better special teams here. Williams to the free throw line. Shot foul coming and he misses the first. Duke 69% from the foul line and Williams is 67%. But interestingly enough, the Duke Blue Devils who come in averaging almost 93 points a game are on a 56 point pace right now. They're five for seven from the strike. Williams up for one more. Mr. Holt. Rebound comes down to Crawford but stolen by Duhon. Dunleavy. Try to flip it to Love in the post. The steal by Crawford. Crawford on his way in. Oh, rejected by Love, but a foul after with contact. And North Carolina State continues to attack the basket. Not a lot of jump shots so far for the Wolfpack. But Crawford just takes it right at the goal. And again, Duke not known as a shot-blocking team anyway. And Love, it's a very impressive-looking play, but he really hammered Crawford down low. Crawford goes to the free throw line. And look, no NC State players line up along with him. He's up there for two, and he cans the first. Trey Gidry coming into the game. Trade one three-point shooter for another. Miller goes out. He wasn't given that name at birth with that in mind, but it has adapted itself nicely for the Louisiana native. Crawford with another. Well, you're right. You just have to be, uh, your word is correct, adapt. You have to be adaptable. And Duke has not been very adaptable for three-point range tonight. Only one of eight. Reggie Love on the wing. 
Here's Williams. Battier out of the post. Grabbed there by Love. Oh, and nice in. job by Love. And Duke that time getting the ball inside to Shane Battier. Just because Boozer is out of the game, you don't want to forget the inside game. And Battier has the strength and quickness that against the lineup, the size of which North Carolina State has in the game, he can be effective in there. Ball thrown away by Crawford. Dunleavy tries to get control on the reverse. Trey Guidry gets it. Steve, that's a really good description. Dunleavy never really did gain control. Ball came up funny to him. Duke four points in the last five minutes. When you are relying almost strictly on the perimeter jump shot, particularly the three-point shot, it's going to be hard to score points if the ball's not going in the basket. Henry can't shake Williams. Gives it to Grundy. Says you try. Not many easy opportunities thus far. Good screen and roll. Grundy inside and Kelly cleans it up. Ron Kelly's first basket of the day gives NC State a three-point lead. And that won't go in the box score as even an assist for Grundy, but he's the guy who created that play. Nice drive by Jason Williams. And that's another way to create an inside game, is take the ball and go to the goal. Shane Battier in this game, 0 for 6 from the floor and two rebounds. NC State by one. And if you're North Carolina State, your goal has to be to hang in there stay close and have a chance to win it at the end and that's exactly what they've done so far Trey Gidry and a reach around by Jason Williams that is going to be the eighth team foul on the Duke Blue Devils and it's going to be Williams first of the day Dr. Shefty and staff are gone time out on the court coach K pondering what can create some easy offense Reggie Love gave a try inside on that stick back but the Wolfpack now leading by one as Gidry goes to the free throw line. Love has provided a spark coming off the bench. Once again, NC State vacates the foul lane. And yields the rebound to Nate James. NC State now six out of nine for the strike. Well, one of the things that they're trying to do, I think, Steve, is to make sure that they're back and Duke doesn't get a quick, fast break off the free throw. Here's Williams for three. Jason Williams. As many as they shoot and as well as they shoot them, it's just going to be hard to hold Duke down the entire game from the three-point line. 35% of their offense this year has come from behind the arc. They're two of nine tonight. Inside, Grundy. Yields to Kenny Inge, who hasn't taken a shot. Inge really hasn't had the ball in the scoring position. Down low, Wilkins, shot fake, up and oh, too strong as he got Battier right where he wanted it. Ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be Duke ball when we come back with 7-11 left to go. Father Gerald looks on as Damian Wilkins got in close but couldn't make it go down. Wolfpack trailing by two. Chris Duhon has been a guy who's really answered the bell for a Duke team struggling on offense tonight. Duhon with nine points, getting it by taking the ball to the basket. He's hit a couple of free throws, but with Shane Battier struggling, Duhon has really stepped up. Shane Battier, 0 for 6 from the field here so far. Teammate Buck Dunleavy also 0 for 3. And that's a lot of offense that uh, Duke relies on. A lot of offense on. that's over <laughs> right at the moment. 21-19. Even the equipment manager is over. <laughs> well, we might mention again, for those of you who joined us late, that Duke is wearing the black uniforms because, and I find this hard to believe, they forgot the white. Here's Jason Williams inside on the nice move. Williams now has 10. The Eagle, Anthony Grunt. Not only didn't they bring the white uniforms, they didn't bring their warm-ups. They just had to go over to ACC Fan Fest to get T-shirts. Well, that helped the licensee out quite a bit. Here's a steal by Duke. Here's a gear for sports. Happy to provide him. <laughs> Chris Duhon at the top. Duke starting to impose their will, even though the three-pointers aren't going. And NC State in the zone defense, and it's a very widely spaced zone, trying to cut off the perimeter game. Nate James for three. Boy, and that was with Inns running right at him. What great concentration by Nate James to get that baby to go. Duke on a strong run here of 10 points as they lead NC State by 7, 26-19. Herb Sendak wants the Wolfpack to talk it over. 6-19, and how have they done it? Well, they've used a minute and 45 to manufacture 10 unanswered points to overtake the Wolfpack. And of course, coming up in our second game of the evening, 
It'll be a good one. Third time around for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons and the Maryland Terrapins. Maryland, probably the hottest team in the ACC coming into this tournament, and they've created a lot of buzz as they sit in the third hole taking on Wake Forest. It should be a good one. Lonnie Baxter and Darius Songaila match it up. Stay right here with Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and we'll bring the ACC tournament to you. Steve, those are such quality basketball teams. It's hard to imagine you have that kind of a matchup in a quarterfinals. <laughs> That's true. Grundy at the top has it stripped. Reggie Love out in front. This will be Jason Williams with his 12 point, extending the run to 12. You know, we were talking about Duke not getting very many easy baskets. Well, Love did a great job that time with the double team stripping that ball. And NC State last scored about eight minutes ago. Here comes Craig Henry. Into the corner. Grundy at 10 early points. Well, now here's Love matched up against him, and Love has got it again. Nate James helps strip him. Three on three. Williams makes it four. Battier looking for his first bucket of the day. Wow. And in what style? NC State has to use another timeout. Now, this Love guy, you're sure he's an offensive player, not a he's quarterback? A, he's a wide receiver. But he might change his position <laughs> next spring. <laughs> The Duke defense has really keyed this run. Reggie Love with the double team there knocked it away and enables Jason Williams to pick it up and get down and get an easy one. Duke has struggled against the set defense, but when they've been able to steal it, and they're Love with a second steal. And this is just great ball movement. Jason Williams finds Shane Battier. He has not gotten his rhythm yet, but he looks like he had a pretty good rhythm right there. Score miles, score more miles with a dividend miles visa card issued by Bank of America. It's your ticket to fly on U.S. Airways to ACC campuses and other great destinations around the world. To fly today, visit bankofamerica.com slash U.S. Airways. You know, Steve, it's interesting. You never know what's going to transpire in the ACC tournament. And here in the Virginia-Georgia Tech game, Daryl LeBerry comes off the bench and has a career kind of game and helps Georgia Tech win. And now here, Mike Krzyzewski goes to the bench and pulls Reggie Love off the bench. And Love has been fantastic in this first half. And didn't take part in preseason until after the football season was over in late November. Archie Miller down in the front court. Here comes Clifford Crawford. It's a 15 nothing. Duke run. Has him on top here by 12. 31-19. Wilkins doubled in the post. Now turns and steps on the end line. Out of bounds. Another turnover for the Wolfpack. 12, in fact, here in the first half. Dan. I don't want to belabor the point. Shane Battier went down there and double teamed, and that certainly helped. But did you see who was guarding Wilkins? It was Reggie Love. That's right. Reggie's going to be a hero in this tournament here with this game alone. Here's Battier inside on Kelly. Can't get the roll. Tries to board the miss. Archie Miller comes away with it. Three on three break. Crawford on the wing. Loses control. Baseline jumper. No. Kelly out of the post. Gets refed. Turns and hits. Breaking the drought for the Wolfpack of about eight minutes. 31 21 Duke. Duhan out front. Here comes Williams. Well, now Duke got on a run based on their defense, and now North Carolina State has to tighten up the defense, and they do right there. That's drawing the offensive foul. That's the second foul against Jason Williams. And with all the other problems Duke has, they can ill afford to lose him for long stretches. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. You see Jason Williams head to the sidelines, along with Reggie Love, the hero of the moment. Well, and as you get a look at Jason Williams on the sideline, this is a Duke team that has not had a great deal of depth all season long. So Williams is coming out of the game, but I don't expect that he'll sit there for the rest of the half as a lot of point guards would because when you're playing for Duke, you've got to learn how to play with some personal fouls. Grundy down into front court. If there's a team that stands as an example of how you can use limited depth in the ACC, it was Herb Sendek's first Wolfpack team here in 1997. Boy, James did a nice job picking that up. And again, Duke is turning the defense into offense, and that is really what has keyed this Duke run. Archie Miller down in the front court. 
Rundy with under four minutes to play in this first half. Duke has exploded. And, but Duke really has shut off Grundy's moves to the basket. That time Grundy got loose for the little jump shots that they fouled. Duhon picks up his second. That's the 10th team second. foul now on Duke. Well, so now Jason Williams has two fouls and Duhon has two fouls. Number two, Grundy. And Mike Krzyzewski doesn't have too many options to look at as far as guys who can play at the point. NC State six out of nine from the stripe. Grundy has his 11th point, but it's his first point in quite some time. Well, I don't know that he want to necessarily want to do it long term, but I guarantee you, Mike Dunleavy could handle the ball pretty effectively short term at the point. 11 points, two rebounds for Little Grundy, and the rebound comes away to Nate James. Duhon calls to play. Dunleavy on the wing. Yep to score. Screen and roll with Battier. Pulls up, fires. Rebound comes out wide. And Scooter Sherrill, the freshman from Mount Ola, North Carolina. On the ball game now for the Wolfpack. Dunleavy 0 for 4. Duhon now matched up against Grundy. Miller's been quiet too. Everybody from Wolfpack's been quiet today. Sherrill. Looking for a way to get it to Kelly. Sanders covering him. Kelly. Rebound comes down to Damon Thornton. Cheryl, open three, finally takes it. And a foul on the rebound. Damon Thornton, I believe that's three. Steve, how many times do you see a guy catch it and he's wide open and he hesitates and then, after thinking about it, he takes it. Rarely does that ball go in the basket. Uh, Oftentimes, it's that first impression that counts. Catch and shoot immediately. Think is not part of the process. Jason Williams getting set to come in, but he's going to come get the shooter. One and one. That will be Chris Duhon. Third personal for Damon Thornton, who struggled with foul trouble all season long. He's fouled out of five ACC games. Twelve in the last two seasons. Duhon with a miss, but he'll get it right back. And lift the three from the corner. Battier's rebound knocked away. No problem. Duhon has it again. James for three. Whistle and a foul on a rebounding action for NC State. And the foul's going to be on Clifford Crawford. You know, Duke has gotten offensive rebounds in bunches. They haven't had a lot of trips down the court where they've got offensive rebounds. But when they go to the boards, they get three or four to the Duhon going to the line. Been there a lot so far tonight. Three out of five from the free throw line. Makes the first of a one on one. That's the eighth team foul on the Wolfpack. Duhon has been so active offensively, and they've really needed him to be so because Battier has struggled, and so has Dunleavy. This game, Dan, though, is taking on a similar texture to the second game play between these two. NC State got out to an early lead. And uh, Duke roared back. Time out on the court with 2.51 left to play. Duke opening up a 13-point lead. And we'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let's take a look at our deep game summary. Looks like this. Duke spotted NC State an early need, but three-point field goals, Duke hasn't been too successful that they've been able to force 13 turnovers and fueled a 15-0 run. And those turnovers really have been a big key. Duke did not shoot the ball well, has not shot the ball well against the set North Carolina State defense, and when you turn the ball over, it's just very difficult to set that defense. Duke with 14 points off turnovers. And the North Carolina State Wolfpack attack really depends pretty heavily on Kenny Inge and Damian Wilkins. When those guys in their 13 wins during the season, Wilkins and Inge have combined for more than 30 points. In their losses, Wilkins and Inge score fewer than 20 points. In fact, they're down around 18. And in this game, neither one of them has scored. And so, pretty good job by the Duke defense taking away the other team's most effective offensive players, or maybe not effective, most important offensive players. Inge has only taken one shot. Wilkins is 0 for 3. And Grundy is the guy who has been taking the ball and taking it to the basket. But Duke has done a nice job over this run that they've made here, preventing Grundy from getting the ball. Grundy's on the bench right now. He can't carry them forever. 
Crawford at the top. Get high. Nice screen set by Miller. Took out two Blue Devils. Wilkins baseline. Everybody up. And Wilkins scores what could be an important basket. Now, Wilkins is another one of those guys. Very effective at getting to the basket. That time Crawford, though, wasn't even looking for his shot. You were right. They picked off two Blue Devils with one screen. Crawford was open, but he wasn't even looking to score. He was looking to make the pass. And to execute the play. Well, you have to understand that the play involves trying to score a basket. You don't want to get so involved in the play that you forget about the object of the play. It's true. Dunleavy at the top. Zone defense. Williams penetrates the dish out for three to James in the corner. Rebound taken by Inge and a foul from behind on Nate James. And we're finally going to get to see Inge take a shot at the basket. As he's going to the free throw line. Inge is a guy that gets more than 40%, scores more than 40% of his points from the free throw line. This is his first trip there tonight. So he has been almost totally uninvolved in the North Carolina State offense. Second all-time in free throws made in NC State history. His perseverance, 111 starts in his 121 games. The Wolfpack Red, and he misses the first. And now, Steve, you might ask the question, well, how come if Inge is such an important player? How, why hasn't he been handling the ball? And I think the reason for that is the Duke defense has done such a great job putting pressure on the ball. The guys were handling the ball. They don't have time to look up and find him. Every pass has been contested. Inge with the free throw, his first point. So on back-to-back -back possessions, Wilkins and then Inge get in the scoreboard for the first time. NC State reduces Duke's lead to 10. Dunleavy drives out the baseline, blocked from behind by Kelly, and hit in the head. Oh, and Dunleavy, he's down hard. It looks like two Duke players collided because we have another Duke player down on the other side, and that is Casey Sanders. Boy, Dunleavy may have lost consciousness there for a second. He went down hard. He caved. Now, did the two heads meet, and that's why they went down, or did, were there two separate collisions? No, those guys ran into one another. And it looked like Dunleavy actually got smacked more on the shoulder, right at the base of the neck. Dunleavy going after this ball, comes down, grabs it, and here comes, oh, Nate James, my goodness. Two, two separate collisions, you're right, but that's like a right cross there. Well, Dang. well, actually, three Duke players involved in two separate collisions, and two Duke players went down. Dunleavy now will assume better consciousness on the bench. As he comes out, Reggie Love trying to get in here. I mean, how did Sanders end up at the free throw line? Obviously, he got fouled. Don't be a smart aleck. <laughs> If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> or then I'd have to shoot you. The foul was on Kenny Inge. Out of all that, Kenny Inge, there was one Wolfpack player among the three Duke players, and guess what? He picked up the foul. You know, isn't that the way it is? Don't you hate it when that happens? Everybody runs into one another, and four, Kenny Inge gets the foul. Don Levy's been asked what zip code he lives in originally. As we look at the Budweiser scoreboard, Boston College, Leading a Cinderella effort undertaken by Seton Hall in the Big East. Kansas having no trouble with K-State. I'll tell you what, that Seton Hall team coached by Tommy Amaker, former assistant to Duke, they have come to life in that Big East tournament. Some of their team problems beside themselves. Here comes Kelly inside. Offensive foul. There's Shane Battier drawing the charge. What a surprise. Battier <laughs> has drawn a bunch of them in his career. That's the second foul on Kelly. And it's the 10th team foul, but it's a player possession foul. 12-point lead. That's the 14th turnover for the Wolfpack. Well, I'll tell you, turn the ball over 14 times, only score 25 points at this stage of the first half. You're actually pretty fortunate to only be down 12. Duhon throws it into backcourt. Not touched by NC State. It'll be Wolfpack ball here with a minute 12 left to go. That's the sixth Duke turnover. A pretty good care of the ball despite the fact that one big problem that Duke has had is shooting percentage. Their perimeter game has not been clicking as of yet. Grundy to Miller. 
as we get down to the final 70 seconds of this first half. Boy, Miller has only had that one opening. He took advantage of it, but he has only been open that one time. Miller, cross stolen by Reggie Love. There's that man again. <laughs> that man. And we have a timeout. Called by Duke. A 30-second timeout taken by the Blue Devils. Seconds. And with more on this newest Duke hero, here's Gil McGregor. Steve, Reggie Love, football players you guys mentioned, wide receiver kind of a guy, went to Providence High School in Charlotte, was one of big-time football recruit for Duke, only guy on the campus playing two sports, and he was recruited to play the guard position. But because of all the injuries inside, particularly the bruiser, they've asked him to come inside and become kind of a bruiser. Well, he's done just that, and he has given Duke quite a lift when things weren't going for them on the outside. He mixed it up on the inside, played good defense, a couple of steals, and Reggie Love is more than just a, a football player playing basketball tonight. He's a two-sport guy tonight. Six feet four, 225 pounds, and he's shown really good quickness. He's got three steals tonight. And he really helped get things going. He can, when he came off the bench is when Duke's run really got in gear. There's Carlos Boozer. He's forced all these lineup changes with the break of the third metatarsal of the right foot. Now let's see if Duke goes down and tries to get one quickly. Sort of a two-for-one kind of deal. Mattier does just that. All goes to straight. Good block out by Stephen Sherrill on Nate James, and NC State comes away with a rebound. Now, Duke missed the shot, but Battier got a good one, and now Duke's going to get another opportunity before the half. So Wilkins tries to board it again, but kicked it out with his heel. Boy, Wilkins has really done a good job, Dan, creating opportunities for himself, but he hasn't been able to put it down. Got to first create the opportunity, Steve, and as you mentioned, Wilkins has done that, but ultimately you're going to have to convert, and now Duke, with only three-tenths of a second difference between shot clock and game clock, Blue Devils will have the opportunity to hold it for the last quarter. James gives to Williams. There's Dunleavy back in the game. I wonder if he can see the quarter, whether he's still seeing stars. He went over there and told him where the home uniform is. <laughs> well, I know that they're in Durham. <laughs> it's a flyer. It comes Battier with the drive off the offensive rebound with one second left to go. NC State's long court pass goes astray, and Battier puts a punctuation mark on the comeback effort by Duke. They that's were a, down three. That's actually a break for Duke because Jason Williams took that shot a little too early. Duke 39, NC State 25, the Blue Devils up by 14. Mike Hogwood in halftime when we return to Atlanta. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Chick-fil-A. By your local Jeep dealers. By Comfort Inn. By Haviland. And by Dodge. Our first game of the night session here on quarterfinal Friday of the ACC tournament, and it's Duke by 14 over the Wolfpack of NC State. Mike Hogwood with you at halftime now. And I'll tell you what, Anthony Grundy got hot early for NC State. He had 10 points in the first seven minutes, but then with Duke down 19-16, the Blue Devils go on a 15-0 run, and that accounts for part of that lead here at halftime time for us to bring you the comfort in best of the ACC and we're going to look at some percentage leaders we'll start with field goal percentage in that category Carlos Boozer who is not playing in this tournament leads you see how what he means to Duke Lonnie Baxter second in that category free throw percentage Roger Mason we saw some of that in that second game this afternoon and steals Juan Dixon we'll see him playing a little later on tonight against the Wake Forest Deacons Anthony Grundy is second in that category and he's had quite a first half for the Wolfpack of NC State halftime in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta it is Duke so far 39-25 Jason Williams with 12, Chris Duhon with 11. They lead Duke to this 14-point lead at halftime. This, of course, is a huge weekend. It is the final weekend before the selection on Sunday in the NCAA tournament. So these scores important on our Bud Light scoreboard. Catch up on what's happened here in Atlanta, the Georgia Dome. Earlier today, North Carolina beats Clemson. Jason Capel with 23. They're in the semifinals against Georgia Tech. What a game for Alvin Jones. 20 points, 12 rebounds, and six blocks. 
other scores today. It is Ole Miss a winner the at Southeastern Conference, Kentucky over South Carolina. And also Seton Hall losing right now to Boston College. Kansas all over K-State. That is at halftime. And we'll be back with more halftime activities as we have Duke and NC State, a 14-point lead by the Blue Devils. Back inside the Georgia Dome, starting the second half. Duke by 14 over NC State. Dan, let's take a quick look at our Buick keys to the second half. For North Carolina State, they only shot 22 times in the first half, so they're really going to have to do a better job creating opportunities. And once they create them, they have to convert them. But Duke, they did a great job attacking in the first half. They've got to continue in the second half. Attack squared, attack on offense, attack on defense. NC State has the ball to start the second half. Gerald Wilkins has it out front. Duke in the man-to-man. Wilkins had several opportunities to score inside early, but quite converted. And that's exactly what we're talking about. He created some opportunities for himself off the dribble, but wasn't able to get him to go. Grundy. Mismatch inside as Jason Williams is trying to guard Damon Thornton. He forced that shot, but Damon Thornton comes back with a stick back, and the Wolfpack opens hey, successfully in the second half. Well, that's what happens when you find yourself matched up against one of the guards. Duhon at the top. Duhon, Williams, Battier, Sanders, and Dunleavy. It's Crawford, Kelly, Rundy, Wilkins, and Damon Thornton starting the second half. That's Herb Sendek wants to do. Got a foul on Ron Kelly, sending Shane Battier to the floor. Let's go to Gil McGregor, who talked with both coaching staffs at halftime. You know, Steve, I talked with the Duke staff, and although they've got a great league, they're really concerned about the fact that Grundy's beating them, getting into the lane. They don't want to allow that anymore. And they're also concerned about the number of times NC State's get to the foul line. Of course, that could spell attrition for Duke. As far as NC State's concerned, the 15 turnovers are what hurt them more than anything else. They cannot win the ball game shooting 38% and turn the ball over that many times. Sendek obviously concerned. Shane Battier goes to the foul line. Herb, it's been a tough season for him this year. Injuries at the most inopportune time. He had two of his three centers out at one point. Well, and part of the problem for the day, they're playing this Duke lineup that everybody says is a smaller lineup, and yet Duke, while they did force those 15 turnovers, that has something to do with quickness. They also have 12 offensive rebounds, and you're in pretty good shape when you force 15 turnovers and get 12 offensive boards. Kelly was double teamed, wide open three for Dunleavy. Sanders tries to board the miss, and the foul is going to be on Kelly, and that will be four on Kelly. And Damon Thornton has three, so this Duke team, we're talking about attacking. They continue to attack inside. Duke may be concerned about the number of times NC State's going to the free throw line, but interestingly enough, in the first half, NC State went 13 times. You know how many free throws Duke took in the first half? How many? 13. Don Levy to the circle, and that's his first basket of the evening. 43-27 for Duke. He's one for seven for the field. Breaking the press is Grundy. Three on three inside and a foul on Battier. Maybe. Now it's going to be on Williams. Williams Wait for the pass. Now he was hanging on down in the corner and that's three fouls on Williams. And two of those three fouls are, are little cheapies. And the count nonetheless caused Mike Krzyzewski to think a little bit here. Grundy on the wing for three. Now Grundy has not taken the ball inside the last two times he's had it, settling for jump shot. Wilkins, skip pass to Grundy. I thought that was thrown to you. How about a shot? Uh -huh. Inge inside. Never passed him up. That's really the first time Kenny Inge has handled the ball in effective offensive position. 43-39, Blue Devils in the lead. Three points for Kenny Inge. Did not score the regular season finale against Wayne. Dunleavy is fouled as he makes his move down the lane. This is Damon Thornton, and this is four on Thornton. Council number three, Damon Thornton. Uh, so North Carolina State, a couple of their big guys. We talked about Inge and Kelly before the game, but obviously Thornton, an important factor as well. And Kelly on the bench with four fouls. Now Thornton's going to go to the bench with four fouls. And Herb Sendek forced to go small whether he likes to or not because he's got Archie Miller coming in. This lineup started effective. At good energy level, but right now they're in a 14-point hole. And a man. Duhon looking now for Battier at the dotted line, and he gets it. 
That was a great pass by Dumont. Lots of times a guy will curl off that screen and they'll throw the ball sort of behind him. But not that time. That was a perfect lead pass, allowing Battier to just catch and lay it in. Up and over for Inge. He had to grab it from behind. He'll take it again with that hook. Flip hook with the right hand for Kenny Inge. May start to heat up in the second half. NC State needs it. 5-31. Duhon with a kick out of Dunleavy for three. Boy, Dunleavy's ball has been all around. He just can't get it to go down. One of eight. Here's Crawford spinning. And I wonder, Dan, if he knew where he was going to, or what he was going to do after he completed the spin. Thought he might have been bailed out with a foul, but instead it's the 15th Wolfpack tournament. Well, one of the things we saw this afternoon in that Virginia Georgia Tech game just taking the ball to the basket isn't always the solution you have to be under control as you do that the property was not on that particular occasion North Carolina and Georgia Tech advance to a semifinal showdown on Saturday these two teams vying to do the same Dunleavy's pass hits the rim first this is the run he's in. it's been the kind of day it is for Dunleavy steal by Batty he's trying to pass it and he gets credit for the missed shot Pass to Duhon with the drive, and the foul from behind is going to be on Marcus Melvin. He's just come into the ballgame now for NC State. Melvin is a freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. 14 foul. 14 foul against the Wolfpack. Shooting foul coming up here, however, for, and for Duke. Yeah, Damian Wilkins has had a rough evening tonight. Only two points in the first half. And as we mentioned, Kenny Inge didn't score in the first half. Wilkins with only two. And it's going to be real difficult for North Carolina State to mount much of an offensive surge if those two guys aren't scoring. Wilkins has not finished the season, the regular season, very well, Dan. Over the last five, 5.6 points, and he normally averages 11. Well, you know, let, let's consider the fact that the young man, his father and his uncle, have been publicly critical of Herb Sendak, and that's got to be difficult for Wilkins to deal with. So, you know, a lot of things going on in the life of a young man other than just playing basketball. And the expectations of him are pretty high, too. Got a whistle and a foul away from the play. It's inside. And this one's going to be charged to Reggie Love. Oh, Love, who just came into the ball game, picks up his second foul. Second team foul on the Blue Devils. Dunleavy comes out. Nate Cage comes in. You know, I think Mike Krzyzewski is trying to master the Gene Cady look over there on the bench. I can scowl all the time. <laughs> He's probably still sore about the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> can't hang on. It is turnover number 17. <laughs> He's trying to figure out what kind of sentence he can apply to the guy who forgot the home whites. There's the turnover difference by 10. It has been a very, very effective Duke defensive performance. 15 of those turnovers forced in the first half. And that's really what got Duke going. The defense will cover up some offensive blemishes. James inside, boarded by in. Miller attack. Here comes Crawford. To the top, ends with the jump shot. Ends is capable of making the jump shot, but that's really not a high percentage shot for him. No. State back in the man-to-man. Duhon -man. tries to drag it out. What's going on here? The last couple of minutes. It goes to Love. Open alley. James, 15 on the shot clock, and he is fouled by Kenny Inge as he went across. And with that, with the 14-point lead at halftime, Duke really has the ability to, to do, do a much better job spreading the court and attacking off the dribble, and that's created some problems for the Wolfpack. And it's caused some fouls, too. Inch picks one up here. The Wolfpack trail the Blue Devils by 15. Sometimes injuries beset officials as well. Brian Kersey came in here thinking he was going to be the alternate tonight, but he was pressed into service at halftime, and Ramey Steins came up lame with a pulled muscle so Ryan Kersey gets the nod boy he's out there scowling too a lot of people scowling tonight you know geez Brian lighten up smile it's the ACC tournament it is the, the time of year when the, on quarterfinal Friday where most of the people in the ACC take a football Friday off a basketball Friday off and particularly with this tournament such a great 
anticipation coming in. A lot of people by the TVs instead of being by the computer screens. Today we had 40,000 people in here to see the opening session, and as many tonight, if not more. Jason Williams on the way in. Tries to board his own miss, but knocked it out of bounds out of the hands of Anthony Grunt. Well, you don't often see Jason Williams out of control going to the basket, but that time he got a little bit ahead of himself. Well, I think Duke is somewhat out of character because the trees aren't falling, but they certainly are making up. Grundy gets pinned in underneath and a foul coming up here. Of course, one of the issues that Duke is going to be have to be able to address is the fact that you can't count on the threes falling every night. And so when they're not falling, you're going to have to figure out a way to scratch out a win. And certainly that's what Duke has done, is scratched and clawed on the defensive end, and they have been very effective. With five minutes gone in this second half, they still have a 15-point lead. 46-31. Johnny Dawkins sitting next to Mike Shevsky. Keep in mind, it was a very tight game throughout a lot of the first half, and then Duke went on that 15-0 spurt. Here is Melvin inside. Boy, Inge is lucky he didn't pick up a foul trying to get up over the back of Reggie Love. He misses the tournament. Duke's got the rebound, so in the spirit, they, they don't go for it. Inside, steal. Clifford Crawford pushes ahead to Grundy, but guess who's there? Chris Duhon, and this will turn into an easy dunk for Nate James. NC State trying to get out and run, but you've got to be under control. And another turnover, and another Duke conversion as a result of the turnover. 18 turnover. You don't need a lot of threes when you can get dunks after steals. Over 20 points and points off. Matty A. Board to the miss by Grundy in close, and you can start to see the Wolfpack shoulders sag a little bit offensively. Duhon for three. Oh! Battier tries for the rebound, but he is fouled in the process by Clifford Crawford. It's going to be three on him. It is the 16th foul on the Wolfpack. People talk an awful lot about Shane Battier's skills, but something that he does very effectively is he just knows how to get to open spots. He's one of those guys that has possesses a great feel for the game. That time, he makes the pass, and Duhon shooting the three, and Battier could have stood outside and watched, but instead he goes right to the board. Deep three, Shane Battier, his second of the night. He's got 10. 51-33. And his, his drive in getting to the board that time enables him to get that second shot opportunity. Melvin forces his way in. Inns tries for the rebound, but it goes right to Battier. Here's Duhon, four on two breaks. Up and over too far for James. It'll be Wolfpack ball. You have a question about today's ACC tournament action, such as why is Duke wearing the road uniforms? Go online at theacc.com and submit your question. Following this game, the best one will be answered by one of our answers. Theacc.com, the official website of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, Steve, as we've mentioned, I'll answer that one now since I'm the analyst. <laughs> Duke, Duke forgot the white uniforms. They simply didn't bring them. And not only that, they didn't bring their warm-up. So they had to go over to FanFest. And Gear for Sports supplied some Duke t-shirts. Now, I, but I think if you want to go over to FanFest and buy one of those t-shirts, I think all the XLs and XXLs are probably yeah. gone. <laughs> you probably better look for smaller sizes. There they are. Yeah, that is not the official Duke warm-up jersey. Of course, they're the men in black right there. Uh, led by Carlos Boozer, Nick Horvath. Visions of what could have been that those players not gotten injured. And uh, we may still see Boozer in the NCAA tournament. Here comes Grundy inside. Tough night for him in the second half after opening quickly. Dunleavy with the rebound. Duhon on the run inside. And he'll score. Boy, NC State just didn't get back. Now it's a 20 point. Blue Devil lead, and Herb Sendek wants a timeout. 13.32 left to go. It's a 30-second timeout called here by the Wolfpack. So with Duke opening up the big lead, we'll return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Pride in achievement and setting the standard for academics and athletics is a trademark of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hello, I'm John Swafford, recognizing the corporate partners who share with us the ACC's pursuit of excellence. Tall Tale, Bank of America, Buick, Chick-fil-A, Food Line, Pepsi, and Aquafina support the efforts of our student athletes and the ACC's outreach program. On behalf of the entire conference, thank you.
Welcome back to the Georgia Dome, the 48th annual ACC tournament quarterfinal action, the third quarterfinal of the day as we look at how Duke has scored of late. This is just Chris Duhon pushing the ball up the court. Grundy gets behind and nobody comes to pick Duhon up until it's too late. Looks like a nice screen inside by Casey Sanders. He sealed it off. Nobody was going to come get Chris Duhon that time. Well, I think it's always great when you can get credit for doing something positive when you just stand there, and that's what Casey oh, Sanders God. was doing. I don't know that he knew Here that Duhon was there either. Anthony Grundy came important to get back to Melbourne. Here's Scooter Sherrill, Carolina's top high school player in many quarters of a year ago. Inside it goes to Inch. Skip past to Miller. Cheryl baseline. Sanders gets the rebound. Duke getting quickly from defense to offense. When that possession was really maybe NC State season in capsule. They moved the ball effectively. They got a wide open opportunity. They just weren't able to get it to go down. There have been some great nights for the Wolfpack this season. But they have been on. And they have been really on. I had the opportunity to see three of them against Georgia Tech, Florida State, and Clemson up at the ESA in Raleigh. And they were near unstoppable. Number 11, the shots Richard don't fall. The struggle. Well, this is a North Carolina State team, that, Steve, that scored 90 points against Virginia. But the, the offensive outbursts have just not been overly frequent. They're a team coming in shooting under 45 percent from the field 44 percent we're only shooting 44 percent from the field very very difficult you rely on your defense so much and, and i mean they're playing in a league where duke one of the top scoring teams in the country virginia one of the top scoring teams in the country north carolina one of the top scoring teams in the country Add Maryland to that list. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to be able to play good defense. You have to be able to play good defense. But ultimately, the ball's got to go in the basket. And it just has not, NC State just has not been able to shoot it consistently all year long. Hey, James makes a pair, has nine for the night. Four NC State players found themselves in foul trouble. Ron Kelly and Damon Thornton, you saw resting. Well, Thornton's back in there with four. Scooter Sherrill, Damian Wilkins. Part of the NC State Wolfpack's future. Inge, Thornton, and Kelly all graduated. All knocked away by James and out of bounds. 11 on the shot clock now. Good pickup by Mike Shisevsky there. Yeah. Coach K getting the ball off the floor. Well, now, unlike Nate James, however, Mike didn't dive on it. <laughs> you know, if he's really into this, he'd have dove out there on that ball. Archie Miller maintaining control. The shot clock runs out. Good defense by Duke to cause Miller to make the mistake. Boy, and that's just a, a, an example. North Carolina State didn't check the shot clock. Maybe they thought since Mike went out and got the ball, they, they had uh, changed possession. <laughs> Duke had the possession. <laughs> Nine nothing run for the Blue Devils here, who are looking strong after a slow start. They have responded rather nicely. The foul's going to be charged to Damian Wilkins. That's going to be his first. It's the team's eighth. You know, the interesting thing, Duke hasn't completely abandoned the three-point offense, but they have not been so reliant on that three-point offense. The ball didn't go in the basket early in the game, and so particularly in the second half, they've been taking the ball and driving it at the goal. They've got some pretty good balance. Three players already in double figures, including Shane Battier, who... Didn't score until there were about nine minutes left in the first half. There you see what he's done against the Wolf. 20 points, seven rebounds, two Duke wins by six at the ESA in Raleigh in the first matchup on January 10th and by a month of 26. And he came back to Cameron on February 11th. Of course, Battier has always maintained his sense of humor about things. I saw him before the game and he asked me how I like the new look. <laughs> He kind of likened it to an AAU <laughs> team traveling around. Well, Duke is barnstorming for sure. They're up 57-33. We've got a timeout here in Atlanta. The faces of this tournament as NC State and Duke go at it. Nate James, Chris Duhon, Ron Kelly looks on. He's saddled with four fouls. What will happen to the Wolfpack from here on out? gets a feeling that down by 24 you start looking for reasons why and uh, the turnover story will tell you why 
The NC State Wolfpack have popped it up 19 times. They have more turnovers and they have made field goals. And that is not a positive step. No, it's not. Grundy has not scored in the second half, and he had 11 in the first half. About midway through the first half, Duke just cut off his ability to drive to the basket. He's taken two jump shots since. All knocked off and kicked there by Mike Dunleavy, so a recycle of the shot clock for NC State. And Duke has done a very nice job pressuring the basketball. Herb Sendek may have felt like his team could get the ball inside, but Mike Krzyzewski's squad has done such a good job pressuring the basketball. There hasn't been a lot of opportunity for the guys out on the perimeter to look inside. Even Thornton to Clifford Crawford. Here's Melvin, stripped of the ball by Dunleavy, but it'll be NC State ball. Another example of what I'm talking about. They catch the ball, but Duke swarms the ball, and they do it so quickly that NC State doesn't have time to react. You know, if there's three guys around the ball, somebody's got to be open, but if you put so much pressure on the ball that the guy can't look around, it's hard to find it. Damon Thornton with a three, and that's his first of the year. Wow. Talk about points from unlikely quarters. 57-36. Now shoot, he's a 50% shooter from three-point range. Now one for two, only a second attempt to do When you get down by 24, you start looking for ways to climb back in. Or out. <laughs> We're in this hole, and we... Duhon gets by Thornton. Whips it inside to Batty and foul coming up on Clifford Crawford, and that's four on Crawford. That's just great movement by Battier without the ball. Duke again spreading the court. Uh, number 30, Clifford Crawford. And try to pass by Duke. Duhon has really had a nice little game, a very, very solid game. Started out quickly, scored nine of the first 12 Duke points. He was the offense early in the game. He's fifth in the ACC in assists. One can easily see why Battier on the free throw line. Of course, one of the reasons that you can get a lot of assists is you're passing the ball to guys who score. Yeah. You pass the ball and it's going off guys' foreheads where they're missing the shots. That's what happens when you shoot 49% as a team. When I see an old teammate of mine, Wally Walker, used to say he never had a lot of assists because he was passing the ball to me. <laughs> of course, that was the wrong way to look at it, but that was his theory. 76 ever case award winner. Knocked around by Duke, right back to Melvin. Crawford, an open shot, tries to get inside. It yields to Melvin and a foul coming up at the rim. Now I'm telling you what, Duke is just contesting everything. Every single pass, every single shot attempt. What depth problem? That's what Mike Krzyzewski's crew has said in his last two games. Grundy taking the ball inside, has it knocked away. Now Melvin has it. Here's three guys around him. He throws it out, so they pressure Crawford. Crawford tries to pass it. Here they get that. <laughs> get inside. And then finally Melvin gets it back, and he has three guys on him, and he gets fouled. So he goes to the free throw line where he drops it in. Nate James comes in. Shane Battier comes out. NC State from the free throw line. This is their 15th attempt. Duke has 23. State 9 for 15, 10 for 15 now. Tim Battier is out of the game and sits down right next to the coaching staff. He's one of those guys that never has to get out of the game and hide because usually he's doing things very well. And sometimes the coach takes you out of the game and you try to get down at the end of the bench by the trainer and disappear. The distance between coach and player directly affects the amount of time you stay out. Dunleavy. James to the baseline. Melvin shuts him off. Ten on the shot clock. Dunleavy out at the top. Everybody clears away. Five on the shot clock. Dunleavy. Rebound is there by Nate James. And Duke just pulls it back out. We Dunleavy is one of those guys that seems like he can go and create his shot, get a shot sort of whenever he needs it. Now I didn't make that, but he's doing a good job going to get it. He's such a great job on the offensive boards. They had 12 in the first half. Now this is a very difficult thing to do. That is run the clock down and then a good get a good shot at the end of the shot clock period. Which is coming up very shortly here, and Williams delivers with the drive. He's and that, that is a real back break. You try to play good defense for 35 for 30 seconds, and then in the last five seconds the team gets a layup. 
Wilkins turn and hit. Damian Wilkins only his second field goal today. And obviously for North Carolina State, it doesn't really help them to trade baskets with Duke. They've got to get some stops. When they carry Duke deep into the shot clock, they've got to make the man live into a bad shot. And that just hasn't happened yet. And then, then of course, if they're, even if they're able to do that, they've got to come down and score on the other end. And that's been sort of a problematic kind of proposition tonight as well. Don Levy with five on the shot clock. Shoots over Wilkins. Rebound comes away. Finally to NC State. Crawford will start it The post and Elton. Inside on Sanders. And the tip is in by Damon Thornton. And that's a nice job by Thornton. He's got those four personal fouls, but certainly at this point in the game, there's no reason to hold back. Worry about getting that fifth foul. Go get the ball. Eight points for Damon Thornton. But it's still a big Duke lead here. With 8.14 left to go in the first half, in the second half. And one of the things that these North Carolina State seniors are looking at is wearing that Wolfpack uniform for the last time. That's right. You're talking about guys like Damon Thornton, Kenny Inge, Ron Kelly. And of course, with the loss in this game, the Wolfpack will finish with a losing record, so there won't be any, any NIT this year. Williams is fouled as he attacks the rim, and Anthony Grundy comes up. Tenth team foul now on NC State. Scores from Bud Light around the country, and Boston College exerting their power in the second half in the Big East. Jason Williams for two shots. And so is Kansas. In the SEC, fifth-ranked Florida lead at the half by eight. Tennessee's already fallen today over Nashville. Here's Williams with the free throw, and Batty is right back in. Well, it looks like, it looks like in that Big East tournament, uh, that vampire that's called Seton Hall is finally going to be slain. I guess Boston College playing the Christopher Lee role. <laughs> you know, Boston College has a pretty strong basketball team. Yes, they do. Now, Skinner, 62-42. Duke in the lead. Williams makes a pair. Knocks the ball. Or it's knocked off Gidry and out of bounds. Timeout off the court. 741 left to play here in Atlanta. Duke comfortably ahead by 20. 16 NC State began their journey in 1987 to the 87 tournament championship with a first round win over third seeded Duke. Pack was paced by Benny Bolton's 20 and Charles Shackelford's 16 points. Danny Ferry's 20 points not enough as State won by seven in overtime. There's Benny Bolton headed down the court. Ironically, that was NC State's last tournament championship, 1987, and they needed that tournament championship, Dan, to get into the NCAA. In fact, the last two tournament championships that NC State has had, they had to have, otherwise they weren't going to the big dance. Well, coaches playing that game. Yeah, we got a glimpse of Tommy Amaker and Ken Snyder. <laughs> Crawford, of course, in 83 when State won the ACC championship. They added the national championship for good measure. Here's Wilkins with a nice move inside. And that 83 team that won the national championship was one of those teams that changed the game of basketball because, of course, one of the strategies that the Wolfpack employed is they were behind in just about every tournament game and they fouled to get back in and teams missed the front end of the one and one constantly. And so that's why you have the rule nowadays where at seven fouls, it's the one and one. But when you get to 10, it's a two shot foul to discourage exactly that kind of strategy. And then, of course, Eric Whitberg with the big assist. Lorenzo Charles. You can never forget that. Here's a shot by Dunleavy. It just isn't working for him tonight. One out of 11. Crawford ahead for Marcus Melvin. Oh, what a block by Battier. Melvin scores. Battier fouls him, but the first block was a thing of beauty. Battier, of course, made his mark as a freshman with his defensive play. Two time defensive player of the year. This is why. Boy, that's great timing. And I'm sure Melvin, <laughs> there's no way he's going to get it. But Battier showing you some quickness off the floor. Battier and Kenny Inge were part of a talented group. It was uh, all rookie ACC back four years ago. Robert O'Kelly, Alvin Jones. 
Well, that's quite a class. Yeah. Jones had himself quite an afternoon as he helped carry Georgia Tech to a win over Virginia. An upset of the seeds of sort. Georgia Tech will meet North Carolina in the first semifinal tomorrow. Duke bidding to go into the second semifinal game. We've got a whistle and a foul. And this one's going to be, I believe, Scooter Sherrill. Coming up next, we've got one more quarterfinal to go, and it's probably the one that's provoked the most interest today. The third seeded Maryland Terrapins, who have won five straight regular season games coming in, will take on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Wake finished with a flourish with a win in their three final road games in the ACC. Darius Sangala, Lonnie Baxter, two of the characters we'll be talking about a lot here in another about 35 minutes. Nate James on the free throw line now is in double figures. He's the fourth Blue Devil to join that group. Duke, of course, has received balanced scoring the entire season. However, I think, particularly without Carlos Boozer, the Duke Blue Devils may not be able to survive as they advance through this tournament unless they get a little more production from Mike Dunley. Nice basket by Clipper Crawford. That's his first field goal of the day for as much as he's handled the ball. NC State now 16 points back. There's still plenty of time to engineer a comeback in this one, but they need a stop at the other end of the court. Stop creates the opportunity, and then offensively, they've got to convert them. Help, help to cause a great deal if they could hit some threes. But see, Williams is just one of those guys that makes that kind of a comeback so difficult because he's so strong, so quick with the basketball. It's hard to take it from him. Gidry commits the foul. Classic illustration of just what we were talking about, and Williams going to the free throw line. There's Gidry, the freshman out of Louisiana, had a big game against Wake Forest, dropped five out of six threes on the Demon Deacons, even though the Wolfpack lost in overtime in Winston-Salem. Definitive game for that young man. Came back and uh, has averaged over the last 10 games nearly six points a game. Williams misses. Here comes Wilkins and Grundy. Crawford going out, Damon Thornton going out. Grundy still hasn't scored in the second half. Free throw story. Duke starting to rip it up there. Free throws, points off turnover. Williams misses and Gidry picks it up, so it's a good foul. And particularly in the first half, second chance points for Duke. They have 12 offensive rebounds. Look at that steal by Jason Williams and the finish. I didn't get the two free throws, he said, so I'm going to get it this one. Well, you just. You're dribbling the basketball. You've got to be careful about turning your back because the Duke Blue Devils really have been running at you. 21 points now for Duke as a direct result of North Carolina State turnovers. Feet ahead to Wilkins. Started by James. Turns, fires, and hits plus the foul. Nate James picking up his third. And Damian Wilkins now with eight points on the evening. 16 fouls. It's a situation where Wilkins catches the ball inside and now Duhon runs away so he's got a little room to maneuver. Nate James gets called for hitting him on the arm. The roles that Wilkins was not getting in the first half seem to be falling for him in the second. Might be a little too late. It's back to the 16 point game again. There's still five minutes to play. So that's certainly not an insurmountable move, but the Wolfpack are going to have to get it going both defensively and offensively. And Duke does such a great job spreading the floor. They shoot free throws effectively. They handle the ball well. Yeah, milking that clock. They have a 10 on the shot clock this possession. They haven't been below the foul line. Williams looks off a possible pass and passing by Nate James with the step back. 13 points for Nate James, 68-51. Well, you get him to miss the shot, you have to get the rebound. Another offensive rebound for the Duke Blue Devils. You gotta figure that stick back fading away doesn't have much of a chance, but Nate James put it down. There's the pass from Melvin to Grundy. And we've got a jump ball. Possession now to Duke. So again, the Duke defense creates what constitutes turnover. Johnny Dawkins, Mike Mikeshevsky. See, they're they're younger and assistant coaches, so they don't quite scowl as well as Mike Shevsky does. They'll learn. 
Somebody's going to smile at the players. I guess it might as well be the assistants. <laughs> it's the good cop, bad cop syndrome. Down to 10 again. Near Steele, Grundy gives Williams an opening to create. Dunleavy for three. And I'm telling you what, Grundy had to think that that was the steal, but Jason Williams recovers so well. Johnny Dawkins, now he's not smiling, but he's got to like that one. Yeah, but he's thinking, should I scowl here or smile? <laughs> Wilkins, triple, triple team. team. Wow. Scooter Sherrill for three. Battier with a rebound. Triple team, but Duke reacts back very quickly, so that wasn't an uncontested three-point shot. No, it wasn't. Plus, it was a freshman take. Battier to the top. Williams now pulls on the shorts, puts the ball on his hip, and waits for the state defense to respond. Boy, it has become so quiet in here. I mean, there's... I think there are more people here than were here this afternoon. Now, they listed the crowd at 40,083, so... There's Williams on a nice drive, going left with the right hand. And Mike Krzyzewski gets that timeout so he can get some subs in the game. There's no sense with his depth problems or potential depth problems keeping his guys in any longer than they have to play, and I think he feels like this one is in the bag. Now, here's Williams just taking the ball and going right past and all the way to the basket. Williams. Boy, that's a nice play. That is. 17 points for Jason Williams. And the Duke Blue Devils continue to prove that we may be undermanned, but they have decided that uh, they're going to play it defensively. May not fall from outside, and now different players will come into the ball game. But now, even without Carlos Boozer, there's some pretty good players on that Duke team. Yes, there are. It's not like the cupboard is bare over there. <laughs> You see Andre Buckner is in the ball game now for Duke, along with Reggie Love, Nate James, and also in the game J.D. Simpson. So it's time for Mike Krzyzewski to start thinking ahead to Saturday afternoon. Casey Sanders and Carlos Boozer are. As the Blue Devils now have a 22-point lead. The second-seeded team is the one or shared the ACC regular season crown the last five years. We'll move on. Dittrich's three doesn't go at James Morton. Who they face is a subject of great discussion in this hall tonight. As the Maryland Terrapins will face a team for the third time, but I, I don't recall when Kevin Messenger was talking about this earlier. The sports information specialist from Maryland. I don't recall a team having to take on another team three times that was ranked to beat them all three times. Thornton spanks away the shot. And there's a three by J.D. Simpson. Well, Steve, I'm not a believer in that, how difficult it is to beat somebody three times in a season theory. I think if you match up well, you got a heck of an opportunity. And Maryland matches up pretty well against Blake Here's Wilkins inside. Damian Wilkins in double figures for the first time in the last six games. And I think one of the keys to that game will be something that we saw here tonight there. Wilkins gets the steal. Duke's ability to generate easy baskets, NC State's inability to generate easy baskets. I think that'll be the key to the Maryland Wake Forest game. Who can get the largest number of easy opportunities and convert them? Wilkins tries inside and gets it again. Damian Wilkins with 13. And all but two here in the second half. Now, but now Love is in no hurry to pick up the basketball. And Wilkins tried to help him out. The official decided to say, no, you better not. Timeout on the court. A minute 19 left. Duke by 21. All right, Vance Auto Parts, best play of the game. Started by defense, Reggie Love, football wide receiver, helps the steal. Helping out Nate James, they'll go ahead. Jason Williams will yield to Shane Battier. And in the first half, that was Shane's first basket of the game. No, it wasn't in the first possession. It didn't happen until well, about six minutes were left in the first half. Battier with only three first half points, but 14 for the game. And Duke is cruising to the semifinals. They lead here 76-55 with a minute 19 left. Mike Krzyzewski has emptied his bench. Andre Buckner slips. And Chris Duhon.
Steve's up front and steal. It's an interesting way to get the ball in bounds. Throw it to the other team and then steal it back. <laughs> Helps the stat. Oh, off the button. One minute. Here's Buckner at the top. The final minute of play here as Duke moves into the semifinal round in the four o'clock game against the winner of the game coming up after this one. Wake Forest and Maryland. J.D. Simpson. Andre Buckner with four on the shot clock. Shot clock from behind and a foul on Trey Gibson. So Buckner, who happens to be the brother of former Clemson star Greg Buckner, has Kenny Inch and Ron Kelly contemplate their final game in a Wolfpack uniform. Dan mentioned this team will finish under 500 and there'll be no postseason for Herb Sendek's crew this year. Went to the final of the NIT a year ago. They have not been to the NCAA in 10 years. Buckner on the free throw line now for Duke. If you go through a four year career in college, and you just don't really appreciate until you're in the locker room that last time taking off that uniform that it's all over. That is really, you try not to think about that. Mm -hmm. But then when you take it off and realize that you're not going to be able to put it back on again, it certainly has an effect on it. There's some long faces on the NC State sideline. August and Scooter Sherrill in the front court represents the future. And does Trey Gidry for a three pointer. 32 seconds left to go. All that's left to determine is the margin of this one. Duke by 18. Gidry steals the inbound. Damon Thornton playing his last game. Still out there battling hard. A lot of contact here in the closing seconds. Yeah, this is Ryan Caldback now into the ball game. He knocks the ball out of bounds. Our Pepsi players of the game for NC State. Damon Wilkins coming on in the second half with 13 points and four rebounds. And Jason Williams with 19 points and four assists for the Duke lead up. Solid overall game for Jason Williams. And in the second half, he really has controlled the ball for Duke and allowed them to run out so much of the clock. 76-61. All lost out of bounds by, NC, uh, by Duke. NC State will have it back here with 12.8 seconds left to go. Gerald, a very happy time for Damian Wilkins. Tough season for him. Gidry tries for a third three pointer and doesn't get it. Eight seconds left to go. And this battle is about to end. The Duke Blue Devils get ready to push into the semifinal round as they have defeated the NC State Wolfpack for the third time this season, winning by a score of 76 to 61. They had a 39-25 lead at the half. The only time where things got shaky over the first 10 minutes when NC State played pretty good defense. The three ball wasn't falling for the Blue Devils tonight. They found another way to win. They won it with their defense as they turned NC State over 21 times in this ball game and cashed in with as many points off turnovers. Ron Kelly and Kenny Inns. There's Anthony Grundy. As they put on the Wolfpack uniform for the last time this season, as it Dan said, several of them for the last time ever. As they go off to the locker room. Carlos Boozer hopes he gets a shot at some NCAA action. He shakes hands with Damian Wilkins. And Duke lives on for another day. Blue Devils getting ready to contemplate what happens next. Maryland and Wake Forest coming up next. The winner gets Duke, but right now, Shane Battier gets a chance to talk with Archie McGregor. I thank you so much, Steve. It, it seems like the reports of the demise of the Duke Blue Devils is a little premature. Well, we're playing with a chip on our shoulders right now. Uh, a lot of people kind of saw once Carlos went down, and they were out to prove we had some great players and uh, the greatest coach in the game still. I know that mentally it wasn't going to be a letdown for you guys, but have you had to do anything technically different with Carlos out? We tried to speed up the game more. Uh, we're, we're a much smaller team without Carlos, but we're a much quicker team. Uh, putting Chris Duhon on the floor with Jason puts a, uh, a combo out there. It's pretty tough to match speed-wise. Certainly, you've had to readjust what you do. We see you playing defense. Now on the inside, not just taking charges, but blocking shots. Have you had to rethink your defensive role? Well, I've tried to make plays. Uh, that's been my uh, my ammo the, the whole time I've been here. And with Carl Sauer, it affords me a, a chance to go down and make some plays. Now, how do you guys feel about the way you're playing right now? Can beat anybody. We feel great about ourselves right now. Uh, if, if we're shooting well and uh, 
Jason's playing like he can, you know, beat anyone. Outstanding game. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Shane. Steve, Shane Battier is the consummate leader of this club. That's with or without Carlos Boozer. And Duke's got to be reckoned with every night you play him. Even when they don't shoot well, Gil, which they did not do tonight, 40%, but they found other ways to win. And they defeated the NC State Wolfpack 76-61 in the first quarter final of the evening session. We'll be back to Atlanta right after this. Now get all this at no extra charge.